Hello there and welcome to Health Insurance 101. So in today's Health Insurance Basics video, we're going to break down some of the more confusing parts of health insurance to help you make the best choices about your health insurance. My name is Sarah and I'm here today with iHealth Brokers. Stay tuned. Welcome back and welcome to our channel. So there's no way around it. Health insurance is just really confusing. I mean, how do you pick the right plan? Why did you get that big and unexpected bill? And what are you paying for after all? So there's definitely a lot of confusion that surrounds health insurance. And today we're going to break down some of the more confusing parts to hopefully better educate you so that you can make the right choices about your health insurance. Now at iHealth Brokers, we are licensed health insurance brokers and we are licensed nationwide with over 200 carriers, so we really are experts. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below and rest assured you're going to be getting some expert advice. And of course, you're going to be getting some advice and answers to your questions at no charge. We do not charge our clients, there is absolutely no charge for our services. So if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below or you can give us a call here at iHealth Brokers at 888-410-0344. Now, like I said, today's video is basically Health Insurance 101. So we hope that it will answer most, if not all of your questions. So if you're in any type of open enrollment period, you're probably trying to figure out whether to go with an HMO or a PPO. Now I'm gonna break down some of the general differences. So an HMO is a health maintenance organization. Generally speaking, you're gonna have lower monthly premiums, but less flexibility. And here's what I mean by that. So with an HMO, your plan is only going to work with in-network doctors. Now you can check out which doctors accept your plan, generally speaking, on your carrier's website. Now, if you choose to go to one of those physicians, then you're going to be covered. However, should you choose to see an out-of-network physician, someone who is not on your plan, you're actually going to be responsible for the entirety of the costs. There is no coverage out of network unless it is a true medical emergency. However, I do want to mention that you can actually apply for something called a gap exception if there is no provider that meets your specific needs in your immediate geographic location. However, there's going to be a lot of paperwork involved and generally speaking, it's a pretty big headache. So if you're in an HMO, just pretty much plan on seeing an in-network physician. Then there are PPOs. So PPOs are preferred provider organizations. There's going to be a lot more flexibility, but generally speaking, those monthly premiums are going to be a little bit higher. Now, as far as the flexibility, here's what I mean. You're going to have coverage for in-network doctors, so doctors that accept your plan, and out-of-network doctors. However, you're gonna have less coverage for out-of-network doctors. So what I mean by that is if you choose to see a physician that is out of network, your insurance is still going to contribute towards some of the costs, but they're not going to contribute as much as if you were to see an in-network doctor. However, if you need to see multiple specialists or you're very picky about the doctor and physician that you choose, then you may wanna go with a PPO. Additionally, with a PPO, you don't have to pick a primary care physician, and as a result, your PCP, primary care physician, is not responsible for organizing any specialist visits. With an HMO, you have to go through your primary care physician for any specialists, which can be a pain in the butt. Absolutely, it can be. So basically, it all boils down to more flexibility, higher costs with a PPO, less flexibility, lower costs with an HMO. Now, regardless of whether you choose an HMO or a PPO and who your carrier is, there are always out-of-pocket costs that you need to be aware of, specifically premiums, co-pays and co-insurance, 
and deductibles. And you absolutely need to be aware of out-of-pocket maximums. These are the areas where people tend to get confused and maybe frustrated because this is where money gets involved. Now, even though we're gonna go over these terms generally today, you really need to check with the specifics of your plan. We're gonna start with the easy one, premiums. Premiums are pretty straightforward. Premiums are what you have to pay on a monthly basis to keep your insurance active. Now, if you have some type of employer-sponsored group health insurance and your employer has more than 50 full-time employees, they're required to offer health insurance to their employees and they're required to contribute at least 50% towards the monthly premium. Now that's why COBRA seems so expensive to so many people, because when you've lost your employer-sponsored group coverage but you choose to enroll in COBRA, you're now responsible for the entirety of the costs. So that would be your portion that you were used to paying before, plus your employer's portion, plus up to a 2% administrative fee. Deductibles are where things get a little confusing. So a deductible is the amount that you have to pay out of pocket before your insurance kicks in. However, deductibles can work differently based on your plan, so check the terms of your plan. In some plans, even though you may have a deductible, some services may be partially covered by your insurance even before you meet your deductible. For example, before you meet your deductible, you might have a $25 copay at the doctor's. However, on another plan, you might be responsible for the entirety of the costs before you meet your deductible. So again, I say check the terms of your plan. Then there are prescription drugs. Some plans may wrap up prescription drugs into a prescription drug and medical cost deductible. Some may separate them entirely. So check the terms of your plan. And then there's something called the individual deductible versus the family deductible. Now this is only applicable if you're on a family plan, of course. And even though it's confusing, it's actually to your benefit to make things less expensive. So if you're on a family plan, you've noticed that there is an individual deductible and a family deductible listed. So once you have met your individual deductible, you specifically, your insurance is going to kick in, and that's regardless of whether your other family members have met their individual deductible or that family deductible has been met by everyone. So again, that family deductible, basically everything that you have to pay out of pocket is going to apply towards your individual deductible and the family deductible. Now on the flip side, let's say you haven't met your individual deductible, but other family members have had significant medical expenses and that family deductible has been met, well, your insurance is going to kick in regardless of whether you've met your individual deductible. So like I said, I know it's a little confusing, but it's actually to your benefit. Deductibles are definitely a little bit convoluted, so you want to check the terms of your specific plan. And additionally, there are other benefits that will always be covered, or at least they'll be covered under marketplace plans, regardless of whether you've met your deductible. You can check out exactly what those list of benefits and services are on healthcare.gov. That's healthcare.gov. Again, that's only guaranteed if you're in a marketplace plan. Health insurance is basically a type of cost sharing. You're going to be responsible for a portion of your health care costs, and your health insurance is going to be responsible for a portion of your health care costs. This is done through copays and coinsurance, or a combination of both, and they are a little bit different. So, copays are a set amount that you'll have to pay for a given service. For example, a trip to a specialist might be $50, and a trip to the ER might be $250. Generally speaking, these are going to be printed on your insurance card. These usually also apply to prescription drugs. It might be $5, $10, etc. Then there's coinsurance. 
So coinsurance is not a set amount. It's actually a percentage. So your insurance will pay a percentage of the costs and you're going to be responsible for the remaining percentage. So you can see how this might be a little bit more variable dependent upon how much the provider charges, how much the service costs. Generally speaking, for an in-network doctor, your insurance is going to cover between 60 and 80 percent. If you're on a PPO, like we talked about earlier, for an in-network doctor, your insurance will usually cover about 60 to 80 percent, but they're going to cover less when you see an out-of-network doctor. So something to remember. One of the saving graces of health insurance are the out-of-pocket maximums. Now, out-of-pocket maximums are just that. They are the maximum that you can be required to pay out-of-pocket. So let me break it down. Let's say you have to have a major and very expensive surgery. Let's say it costs $150,000. Well, once you've met your deductible, you're going to be responsible for coinsurance. And once you've met your out-of-pocket max, that's it. No more. You're not going to keep paying coinsurance on top of that. You've reached your out-of-pocket maximum. Now, these out-of-pocket maximums are set every year. So if you're on a marketplace plan, an individual out-of-pocket maximum is $8,550. And for a family, it's $17,100. Now, these actually work the same way that those deductibles work for individuals and families. So if you've met your out-of-pocket max, then no more expenses for you. And if you haven't met your out-of-pocket max, but your family has, well, no more expenses for you. So they are definitely a major help. Having these out-of-pocket maximums set can help prevent people from experiencing crippling medical debt, which is really one of the major reasons that you want to have health insurance. It's there in case there should be a catastrophe. Now, if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to give us a call here at iHealth Brokers at 888 4100344. We certainly hope that today's video has helped to clarify any questions that you may have. But if it didn't, if there's any remaining questions, give us a call or leave your question in the comments below and we will be more than happy to help. And if you liked this video, please make sure to click like and subscribe as well to stay up to date. And if there are any other videos you'd like to see, let us know so we can get on it. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Bye-bye.